for that. Uh, got it. For that recording and that meditation there about uh, God restoring our soul and being with us. Good morning, everyone. Good to see uh, everyone on screen. And um, I am where I am because we want a little bit more consistent uh, uh, internet connection. <laughs> so here we are uh, at the condo house. Um, and, you know, uh, earlier this week, we celebrated uh, Megan's birthday. And uh, I don't even know, I'm not sure how old Megan is. My, I don't even know how old she is. I just keep saying she's 25. So that's why we have the two five behind us. <laughs> I'm kidding. I do know how old she is. We just, uh, we just decided on that number. And uh, I thought, all right, do I take it down or do I put it or keep it up? I left it up. So just a little conversation piece. Let's uh, go ahead and, and center down here and open up with a word of prayer, shall we? God, we are grateful for today's light, the sunshine, the gathering of community, the light of your word and the sweetness of your presence. Help us to open our hearts and to open our minds to your spirit and to your word to us today in this time that uh, we see you walking with us and you shepherding us. Give us the fruit of your patience, O oh God, uh, the fruit of your wisdom, and may we continue to support one another and find life uh, in you, O oh God. We thank you and pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. And amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and move into a time of uh, worship and song. Uh, we have a couple of recorded songs and then a, a kind of a performance that you can just kind of listen along to and uh, sing along to if you know it already. But uh, we'll go into a time of worship and song. Feel free to sing along uh, there at home and uh, Let's uh, join together here in this way. Bert? <clears throat> Oh. 
the two now you you can do this hard thing you can do this hard thing it's not easy I know but I believe that it's so you can do this hard thing station breathing into our gloves it would change me forever leaving for God knows what you carried my bags you said I'll wait for you you can do this hard thing you can do this hard It's not easy, I know, but I believe that it's so you can do this hard thing. Late at night I called and you answered the phone. The worst it had happened and I did not want to be alone. You quietly listened You said we'll see this through You can do this hard thing You can do this hard thing It's not easy, I know But I believe that it's so You can do this hard thing In a place we thought barren, new life appears. Morning will come whistling some comforting tune for you. You can do this hard thing. You can do this hard thing. It's not easy, I know. But I believe that it's so You can do this hard Lloyd, you're on. Lloyd, you can talk now. Are you ready for scripture? Yes, you're on for scripture. Thank you. For those who like to follow along, I'll be reading from two different scriptures. The first is in the New Testament, Romans 12. 12 and the second is in the old testament psalms 56 verses 3 and 4 and i'll be reading from the new revised standard version beginning with romans 12 12 rejoice in hope be patient in suffering persevere in prayer
in Psalms 56, verses 3 and 4. The prelude to the verse 3 is, O Most High, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust. I am not afraid. What can flesh do to me? Thank you, Lloyd. We're just waiting for Mark. There he is. Hi. <laughs> oh, the joys of doing this at home. <laughs> um, I appreciated the, uh, <clears throat> the music and uh, Kind of considering what um, Carrie Newcomer was saying in that uh, that last song, and in reflection uh, to today's scripture. Thank you, Lloyd, for sharing for sharing that. Sometimes the best the best things can be said in just a few words. Um, I had a quote by Paulo Coelho that I wanted to wanted to share about uh, this the, the theme of patience. I wanted to talk about that today. Coelho writes this. He says the two hardest tests on the spiritual road are the patience to wait for the right moment and the courage not to be disappointed with what we encounter. <laughs> uh, talking about how. Uh, the role of patience uh, plays plays out in our spiritual journeys, in our spiritual journeys in the wilderness, uh, in our journeys in uh, our experience of God and our experience of faith. <clears throat> I always think it's ironic that whenever I'm preparing and to give a message uh, on a selected topic, it, it usually I realize that. Uh, in that time and in that writing process, how much work I have to do within myself on the very thing I'm trying to write on. Um, I've been impatient uh, and, and unsettled over the writing of this message and the, this sermon, so much so that I think I've scrapped one or two uh, versions of it. And now it's kind of been uh, boiled down to a devotional. Let's put it that way. <laughs> And um, as uh, most of you have heard before, um, the, the phrase that patience is a virtue, as in if you work hard enough at it, this is something that can be accomplished, uh, this idea of patience uh, in our lives and, and coming about in our lives. <clears throat> However, if I find that patience is something more than just a goal that I work towards, uh, but in reality, it's uh, a process that I soon face the very opposite rising out of me, maybe impatience, the more I strive to be patient. It's one of those things that uh, you know what it is, but to attain it, how, how, do we, how do we get that? How do we integrate that into our lives. Yet in the, the Christian tradition, uh, it makes reference that patience is an essential quality uh, to any who would seek to obey and to follow Christ. Um, Wesley once uh, wrote these words. He said, there is no love of God without patience and no patience without lowliness and sweetness of spirit. And another quote by Cornelius Planica said this about patience. He said, patience is like good motor oil. Uh, it doesn't remove all the contaminants within us. It just puts them in suspension so they don't get caught into 
what works within us and seizes us up. Patient people have, so to speak, a large crankcase. Uh, they can put a lot of irritants into suspension. That's uh, Planiga and what he has to say about this, uh, the idea of patience. So how do we approach this? How do we uh, not just understand it? I'm, sh I'm sure we've all seen it. We've seen it in our lives at times and maybe most of the time. Um, how do we, uh, how do we uh, integrate this within us? But I think we should first, in, uh, first take note that uh, oftentimes whenever scripture tells us to be patient and to, uh, uh, to wait, to be patient with one another, to be patient with the workings of God, uh, we should take note that scripture never commands patience outside of our dependence upon and our experience of God and faith. They're always linked to one another. Uh, if there's ever a time in, uh, in scripture that says, be patient, it's always connected to uh, our experience with God. So in essence, patience is not a primary outcome, but a secondary result when we give ourselves wholly and unceasingly to God. Patience is the result of when we give ourselves wholly and unceasingly to God. Our experience and commitment to live by faith in God will lead eventually to growth in our being patient. It's not enough to just simply try, but to understand patience and peace and joy are made manifest because of our life in God, they come from God. Uh, our life in God is found in what we've been reading there in the book of Thomas Kelly uh, as that inner sanctuary of the heart. And whenever we give ourselves wholly to that and realign and recenter ourselves wholly to that, we find a, a change in our attitudes, a change in um, a change in our the way that we walk and the way that we can approach life. Experiencing God and uh, experiencing God and the outcome of that experience, one of those things is being is patience in our lives. Secondly, patience is forever linked to healthy spiritual communities. It's one thing to try this, you know, on on our own. Uh, it's another thing to have a community around you uh, that you can uh, lean into and that you can depend on. And I say healthy spiritual communities uh, because just as there are unhealthy family systems, uh, there can also be unhealthy spiritual communities. Um, usually such systems have the basis of shame at its root and maybe the tacit phrase of a shame-based spiritual community is conform or else. <laughs> uh, usually some, you know, within these systems, uh, you know, the fruit of the spirit and, and this idea of patience doesn't always come about. However, communities that are, have open communication, honesty, vulnerability, and genuine faith in trusting God's way of living life together. Uh, these are healthy settings where this, spiritual fruit of patience can grow up. And it is here that people are patient with one another and bear up one another's burdens for each other. To exercise patience, not only within oneself and not only within our own uh, individual experience of God, but to exercise that then within a spiritual community. That's where uh, this uh, this fruit and this manifestation of patience comes about. Uh, so if you have ever been patient with me, <laughs> that is in itself a, um, uh, a mark of, you know, God's gift to the community of believers and people. These, those are just really, you know, I said that this was a devotion and those were just uh, a couple of points that I wanted uh, I wanted to make. I wanted to talk about patience uh, because we've been, you know, kind of cruising along on this theme uh, now for two weeks about being <clears throat> in the wilderness. 
uh, in our lives and what do we learn uh, in the wilderness? We, we spoke about its testing qualities, but what comes out of that time? And what comes out of that is we learn patience. We learn uh, uh, delayed gratification. We learn this, uh, this virtue and this quality that people look for, that people are searching for. Uh, and we live in a time where, where patience uh, needs desperately to be exercised and practiced, but um, it's you know, few and far between where that people encounter uh, those that may be willing to give that and to practice that. How can we uh, as a people and how can we as individuals encounter those that we encounter week by week and day by day and offer patience as, uh, as the way in which we approach them? That is so important. And as I reflect upon uh, my experience with God and I think about God's dealings in my life, I have to say God has been amazingly patient with me. <laughs> it's, you know, I reflect on, uh, you know, what God has, how God has um, been patient with me in many, many ways. And uh, if that's so, uh, the role of the spiritual life is to reflect your source and to reflect what God is doing uh, in the world and in our experience. So while I know that this is an, an and is not an exhaustive uh, mean and by no means a an exhaustive list of ways that patience comes about in the spiritual community, uh, patience comes about as a fruit of the spirit as as I give myself over to that inner sanctuary. Um, this these are fertile areas that I've seen fruition come about of patience coming about and manifesting within me. Where do we find patience in this life? We, we see it in healthy spiritual communities and we see it in our genuine, genuinely holy self-giving experience of God. That's where I see patience coming about. But maybe you have found some ways in which uh, to grow this particular gift in your experience and in your life experience. Um, so I want to invite you to consider and to share uh, such wisdom, if you feel so led during our time of open worship, how have you experienced and grown patience in your own life? Uh, where have you encountered that and what methods uh, maybe have you approached uh, to do that, to nurture that gift? I have three queries for this time of open worship. And the first one is how do we grow and nurture the gift of patience? And secondly is, to you, what does patience look like? What does that look like? And thirdly, why is it important to see patience as a spiritual gift? Not necessarily just a virtue, just something that you work hard towards and kind of behavior management, but as a spiritual gift, as spiritual fruit, why is it important to see patience in that way? Um, Again, uh, if you feel moved by spirit or you wanted to share uh, your, any insights here about uh, today's subject and topic, uh, make sure that you're unmuted. But I would really like to hear uh, how others have encountered uh, this fruit and this gift of patience that we've been talking about today. Let's go ahead and just go into a time of open worship. And if you feel so moved to share, please do so. Let's center down, friends. Sean left a message on the, Sean Conley left a message here and says, it strikes me that the first query works in the reverse. How does patience nurture us and help us grow? 
then that then is the gift. Thank you, Sean. Okay. I think of, uh, you know, speaking about patience and community and, you know, how over the last two years we've been doing this sort of thing <laughs> and how this has taken patience because I know for, much, for a lot of us, this is not how we've done church. This is not how we've in, encountered worship and experienced God. And yet, you know, there has been times of connection and grace and God has carried us, you know, through this time together. And we've been able to exercise and learn patience, uh, not just as a maverick solo journey, but as a group effort and a group choice. Um, and, you know, having flare ups of frustration, that's okay, but not, you know, Reedwood has not allowed that to take root and abide. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, as a group, we've chosen, uh, I think, uh, tolerance, perspective, patience, and continuing to look at the big picture, okay? Uh, wildernesses oftentimes can be seasonal. You know, here is this season, and we want to be true and be authentic in this season. Uh, and, you know, what we need patience for is never easy. Uh, it's inconvenient. It's difficult. And yet, here we are. Thank you for sharing, everyone. Uh, I know we kind of seamlessly kind of cruised into it, into just kind of this uh, testimony time, <laughs> this sharing time, and that's 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 great. I, I like that, and I can kind of treat it more like uh, Tuesday Bible study. Again, we're going to go ahead and just uh, a couple of announcements here. Next week we have. Uh, uh, a congregational meeting, a business meeting uh, after uh, after our time of worship. Uh, if anything, it, you know, we'll we'll have we'll have uh, Reedwood online, uh, and we'll see if there's going to be some sort of way that uh, we can uh, kind of broaden that uh, that uh, that uh, floor for business um, here next week, but uh, just you know, a heads up with that. Um, Wednesday night, uh, we are going to be uh, going into chapter two of uh, Testament of Devotion. Um, I know that we're kind of down to uh, the last folks that are, we're trying to get books to uh, there, that Thomas Kelly book, and uh, really, really has been a, a good time for conversation and, and kind of wading into these uh, into these waters that Kelly uh, writes about and it's been a joy uh, to to share uh, those those times um, again you know usual usual Tuesday Bible study is there at 10 a.m and um, yeah yeah so that's kind of where we're at uh, as far as uh, scheduling scheduling things um, and I just wanted to, to put in there. Uh, be sure to contact me if, if you do need a copy of Kelly's Testament. Uh, we'll try to get that to you and make sure that uh, everyone has a copy there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's go ahead. I'll conclude us here in just a word of prayer. God, we want to center on you and in that center find uh, your way of life and your way of life through us. Uh, God, in this subject and this topic of patience, thank you for the examples we've been given. Thank you for the stories that help us. Thank you for the self-knowledge uh, that we have to know how to live into what is truly life. 
God, we are mindful that uh, of our one another's needs. We're mindful that we are uh, a community on pilgrimage with you. And God, thank you for giving us one another to help us grow in grace, to grow in the knowledge of Christ, and to grow in the fruit of the Spirit. Christ, have your way in us, and may we share that way with to all that we encounter this week, including ourselves, oh God. Mm -hmm. We thank you for that grace, for it's in the name of the Son we pray. Amen. Amen.